Today on KUJH News, following last week's Kansas blackout events, the student body wants a conversation about racism on campus. They'll get that discussion tonight. Plus, Kappa Sigma continues to fight its interim suspension. KUJH News has the update. And a local auto shop spreads hope for the holidays. We'll bring you the nuts and bolts. KUJH News starts now. From the University of Kansas, you're watching KUJH News. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Thomas Hoppe with your Wednesday News. A protest is going on in downtown Lawrence right now. Hashtag Lawrence Dian is protesting against the recent deaths of African Americans by white police officers. KUJH reporter Kaylee Taylor is live at the event. Kaylee, what do you see down there? All right, thanks Thomas. Protesters gathered here at 3.30 at 9th and Mass Street. And as you can see behind us, they are right now reading the names of those that have been killed. Um, they are protesting the recent killings. Most certainly is uh, uh, Michael Brown and Tamari Rice. Right now they're just reading the names. As you can see, there's a bunch of people gathered outside of U.S. Bank here at 9th and Mass. They will be lying down for four minutes in honor of Tamir Rice, who had to wait four minutes to get help after he was shot by police. This protest is one of many Lawrence has seen since the grand jury decision of the Michael Brown shooting. This is all part of the Black Lives Matter campaign that has spread across the nation. Later in the newscast, we will talk to one of the protesters live in Lawrence at 9th and Mass. This is Kaylee Taylor. Back to you, Thomas. Thanks, Kaylee. A payment of approximately $1 million is in limbo for Rock Chalk Park. That's because of a dispute on whether or not the public knew about the payment. City commissioners initially approved the payment at last night's meeting. However, the payment wasn't advertised in the meeting agenda. Mayor Mike Amick says it would have been difficult for the public to know about the report. Those things aren't done at the time of possession. We'll withhold part of our payment to make sure that uh, those things are done and then we'll settle up on the payment once those things are done and, and meet the contractual arrangement that we have with the company. The city manager plans to have the payment as an agenda item for the December 16th meeting. The latest controversy in front of the Lawrence City Commission? Parking for a proposed downtown grocery store. The owners of Checkers want to put a grocery store at 11th and Mass Street. They asked the commission on Tuesday for 18 parking spaces reserved for the store. But nearby business owners like Amy's Coffee House says this would hurt other businesses in the area. Mayor Mike Amick says the commission is looking into various factors and listening to the feedback from the community. The governor's office announces a plan to decrease the state's projected budget shortfall. If the plan holds, the state will be just $280 million in debt at the end of the fiscal year 2015. The budget office plans to increase funding to education and Medicaid, but it plans to reduce funding to various state agencies for, uh, by about 4%. It's also transferring funds from a few programs to the state's general fund. Agencies can appeal their allotment by December 19th. KU basketball's Jamari Trailer and KU football's Rodriguez Coleman will be arraigned on December 23rd at the Lawrence Municipal Court. Taylor was arrested outside the cave, which is a bar at the Oriette Hotel, around 2 a.m. Sunday morning for interfering with the duties of a police officer. Coleman was also arrested outside the cave for suspicion of battery. KU plays Temple on December 22nd, the night before Trailer's court appearance. Trailer will need to be at the Lawrence Municipal Court by 10 a.m. the next day. KU extends the deadline for lifting a fraternity's interim suspension. The university put the Kappa Sigma chapter on interim suspension in October following sexual assault allegations. Originally, the university panel had five working days to present a recommendation to the vice provost for student affairs about the interim suspension. The vice provost then had another five working days to make a decision on the case. All parties involved have agreed on the extension. KU doesn't have a date or timeline to when they'll have a decision. As of right now, Kappa Sigma is still on suspension. Following protests on campus about the racial tension in Ferguson, KU Student Senate will hold a forum tonight on multiculturalism. Students on campus, can conduct a week uh, students on campus conducted a week-long protest after the decision in the Michael Brown shooting. Some students have also questioned the university's silence on the matter. Now, the full Senate is an, open to, uh, is an open discussion to anybody on the matter of the university can better serve the needs of all students.
I think that any student who is interested in these issues, whether or not they want to speak, would really benefit from being in the room and hearing what's going on. Um, the forum starts at 630 tonight. A representative from KU Student Affairs Office will also be in attendance. Earlier, we reported on the hashtag Lawrence Dying event going on right now on 9th and Mass. Kaylee Taylor joins us again as protesters are lying down in protest. Kaylee. All right, Thomas, now as you can see behind me, the die-in is taking place right now. The protesters are laying down for four minutes. That is how long Tamir Rice had to wait for help after he was shot by police. Tamir Rice was a 12-year-old in Cleveland who got shot by a white police officer after he was holding a toy gun. Now you can see the protesters are all just laying down outside of the U.S. Bank here on 9th and Mass. Um, they're doing this. This is part of the Global South campaign about Black Lives Matter, and it's just trying to show that, you know, this is unacceptable and they want to show Bruce uh, police brutality is taking over and so you can just see these have been happening all over the nation people are just lying down being crying showing what happens when you know Michael Brown his uh, the police officer that shot Michael Brown got off the one that shot um, Gardner in New York he was taken off so as you can see they are still lying down here at 9th and Mass this is Kaylee Taylor with KUJH back to you Thomas thanks Kaylee Forgot to enroll for health insurance here at KU? The Kansas Board of Regents Student Health Insurance Plan has opened enrollment for spring semester. Since the United Healthcare added more last minute information before fall semester, it wasn't exactly clear when students could enroll. Because of that, we wanted to get information out to the students at this point to let them know that it's open enrollment time for the spring semester. Open enrollment ends January 19th. Coming up, a local auto shop is changing gears for the holidays. Seeing somebody's face when you tell them, hey, we fixed your car for free, you don't owe us a dime. Why the owners are playing Santa this year, when KUJH News continues. Driving somewhere for this holiday season? Well, you might be happy to hear this. Gas Buddy says Americans are paying 62 cents less per gallon than last year. Some people are even spending about $10 less than what they normally pay for a full tank. During this time of year, anything to save money helps consumers and business owners. I'm actually from 45 minutes south here and I try and take a trip home at least once a week, so there's quite a bit of mileage going on. You know, and then plus, of course, you know, employees aren't spending so much money at the pump going back and forth. And I think everybody's in a little bit better mood when they got a little extra money at the end of the, end of the, end of the week. Want to know where to find the cheapest gas? If you cross the Kansas border, you'll reach the state with the nation's best gas price. Missouri's average is the country's lowest at $232 a gallon. It's followed by Oklahoma at $240 a gallon. The nation's highest prices, Hawaii at $378 a gallon. The holiday season can be a busy time of year for many auto repair shops, but despite a packed schedule, one auto shop in Lawrence is still finding the time to give back to the community. KUJH reporter Amy Fulmer has the story. Bob's Imports has been servicing cars in Lawrence for almost 40 years. A lot of my customers are from around here, like in this specific neighborhood especially. I, I probably, you know, we service probably 90% of the vehicles around here. This year, Bob's is looking to spark change in the community. This week, that means helping a staff member from Pinckney Elementary School. Just wanted to take care of the people that take care of me. Back window wasn't working. Uh, we fixed it. The door switches uh, on the driver's door were broke, and we have replaced those already. Uh, the front brakes were bad. We did those. Repairs and maintenance on this car add up to nearly $1,000. I like the, the, the idea of the surprise at the end rather than them knowing, okay, well, I'm going to get my car back here in a little bit and it's going to be all fixed up. The finishing touch is some fuzzy white dice donated by AutoZone. It's all fixed. Looks great. You know, seeing somebody's face when you tell them, hey, we fixed your car for free. You don't owe us a dime. I don't know you. You don't know me, but we did it anyways. Awesome. Sarah just wanted her window fixed, but she got so much more. The van's really not in bad shape. Just to know that um, everything's in working order, I don't have to worry about it breaking down while I have a van full of kids, is something else. It all started with the idea that one person can make a difference, but it was a real team effort. 
it doesn't take a lot you know I mean we we do on average probably 10 to 12 cars a day and taking one car out of the 10 to 12 and making room to do something good for somebody's no big deal that, that hasn't totally hit me so now I have to figure out how I can sneak back over here and get you guys this holiday season, Bob's Imports is fixing five cars for free. Next year, they'd like to involve more businesses and be able to help twice as many people. Reporting for KUJH News, I'm Amy Fulmer. Hopefully you got your car ready for the winter weather like those people did, because today on campus, we had some freezing rain, making the roads and the sidewalks slippery and icy. The cold weather didn't help either. As we look into our weather tomorrow, it's going to stay cold, but we won't have the freezing rain. So let's take a look at your Thursday outlook. So tomorrow morning, it's going to be pretty cold. It's going to be 34 going into the evening. It's going to warm up to 43. And then by 6 o'clock, it's only going to be 44. So let's take a look at your three-day outlook. So your high for Thursday is 47 degrees, partly cloudy and a 0% chance of rain. As we go into Friday, it's going to be 53 degrees. It's going to be a little bit cloudy, but there is a 10% chance of rain. Hopefully that doesn't come. And on Saturday, it's going to heat up to 58 degrees with some clouds and a 10% chance of rain. It's going to heat up this weekend, isn't that right? Jack? Yeah, some unseasonably warm temperatures, especially around here for December. Usually it's like 20 degrees or something. So not bad for December, I would say. Uh, but Kansas basketball, on the other hand, they are really heating up. A uh, big week for both the hoops on teams on both men's and women's side. We will go live from Washington, D.C. as Kansan beat writer Blair Shea joins us to preview tonight's game against Georgetown. Don't touch that remote. KJ Sports is next. The 6-1 Jayhawks will be looking up to their opponents tonight as they clash with a supersized Georgetown team. Nonetheless, taking on the Hoyas is the latest installment in the Jayhawks gauntlet of a schedule. We are very pleased to be joined by Kansan basketball beat writer Blair Shade all the way in Washington, D.C. Blair, just how tough is this non-conference schedule for the Jayhawks? Go. Yes, Jackson, it has been a really tough uh, non-conference schedule this season, but Coach Bill says Coach Bill Self said it's good for his young squad. Uh, after losing to Kentucky, they've won five straight, including uh, defeating Michigan State and coming back from 18 points against Florida. Uh, junior Perry Ellis and freshman Devontae Graham both said that they like the not tough non-conference schedule because it will help them out later in the season. Just taking it game by game, man, and just just competing yeah, at, at the, the highest level. You know, right. we all, we're all having fun, and we all want to get better. So they have a pretty good team couple of tough losses, so we know it's going to be a good game, dog fight. Here at the Verizon Center, uh, tip-off between Georgetown and Kansas is less than two hours away. Right. Kansas We're will have a tough task other... against Georgetown's physical and tall team, especially without Jamari Trailer, who was suspended this week after being arrested Sunday morning. Uh, Coach Bill Self said he rely on Cliff Alexander uh, for the load off the bench in place of Jamari Trailer. Uh, this is a team that hasn't lost in this arena this year, so Coach Bill Self will have a tough time rotating his players in and out, uh, and we'll see what happens. It will be interesting to see what Bill Self does. Uh, from the Verizon Center, I'm Blair Shade. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, Blair, thank you very much. Uh, Blair Shade, basketball beat writer for the University Daily Kansan from the nation's capital. Tip off tonight at 6 o'clock. And tomorrow night, the women's basketball team will also be in action as they travel to take on Purdue. The Jayhawks are coming in hot after a big upset, and it was actually a beatdown of 10th ranked California on Sunday. Chelsea Gardner has averaged more than 19 points in her last two games. More on her in a little bit. And the team's efforts are not going unnoticed either. Kansas is starting to receive some votes in the top 25 polls. That tip-off will be at 6 p.m. tomorrow on the road at Purdue. Lauren Aldridge earned Big 12 Freshman of the Week honors, a 5'7 guard from Marshfield, Missouri. Aldridge helped the Jayhawks upset Cal with 11 points to go along with 5 assists and 4 rebounds. And we promised you more Chelsea Gardner, so here she is. The senior and team's top player is one of 50 finalists for the Naismith Trophy, given to the nation's best player. Gardner, no stranger to big-time honors, twice earning Player of the Week in the conference last season, topping the All-Big 12 team as well. More accolades coming to Kansas football today. The Big 12 coaches released their all-conference team, which included three Jayhawks from the defensive side. 
Ben Heaney and Trevor Padula all had already made the AP first team. Now they are joined by senior cornerback Ja'Cory Shepard on the coaches first team. Shepard upgraded from honorable mention honors in 2013 and is also a nominee for the senior class award given to a top performer both on and off the field. So the Kansas football team received some gifts this December. Yeah, they? some players had a great seasons and they were, they were honored for it. Well, speaking of gifts, Santa is in town today, celebrating the holidays with 300 kids from the Boys and Girls Club of Lawrence. KU Center for Community Outreach is ringing in the holidays with kids who may not otherwise be able to. They're making holiday crafts, playing games, decorating cookies, and making cards for people in retirement homes. It's all part of CCO's Mentors in the Lives of the Kids program. The party continues at the Kansas Union until 6 o'clock tonight. Jackson, do you remember making arts and crafts during uh, December in elementary school? It was great, decorating the tree, making gingerbread houses. I mean, w wintertime is about as good as it gets. Yes, yes. I wish I was as good as those kids were. Though, Absolutely. Making crafts. Well, that does it for your Wednesday news. Thanks for watching us this semester. We'll see you back here in 2015. Have a good night.